What is up guys? It's your boy Rick Kakis and today we are going to be discussing what has become my go-to solar titan build for PvE and quite frankly one of my go-to builds in general for PvE content and that is the Phoenix Cradle Titan. However, this all happened pretty recently in response to a nerf to, quite frankly, one of the best builds we've ever seen, and that, of course, is my baby, rip in peace, the Lorely Splendor Helm. Now, what this does is that when you're critically wounded, if you have a full class ability, then it will automatically drop a sunspot, providing even more healing than normal. And if you just cast your class ability, you know, you pop your barricade, it would also spawn a sunspot for healing. So put this thing on and you were nigh unkillable. Like aside from a raid boss white mechanic, you basically couldn't die with this thing. It was so insane. I remember when we were trying to wipe for certain raids, and I would stand in front of enemies or even the boss, I couldn't die. You'd have to like have yourself and teammates take off the Lorely Splendor Helm if you wanted to wipe, right? Like that was how insane it was. And of course, in response, it was nerfed. So it used to provide restoration times two, and now it only provides restoration times one. And there is a significant difference. The Lorely Splendor is by no means terrible. Like if you have a build with this thing, you don't need to rush to take it off, but you're gonna end up dying a lot more with this thing. It isn't as good as it was. So a bunch of other exotics have now become viable. And one of those is absolutely the Phoenix Cradle. So let's take a look at this. So it says for its exotic ability, Beacons of Empowerment. Soul Invictus lasts twice as long. Let's just stop there for a second. Uh, a lot of people think that this is your sunspots themselves. No, your sunspots don't last twice as long. It's the actual buff you get for going in those sunspots. As you can see, when I have the legs on, I go inside, I have 10 seconds of Soul Invictus. Otherwise, I would only have five seconds. Now, this is a big deal for how uh, this buff actually works in the sense that you'll notice when I'm standing in those sunspots, it doesn't go down. It just stays at 10 seconds. So doubling that duration and then on top of it having that duration only go down when you're outside of a sunspot means that you can have essentially 100% uptime with Soul Invictus. Like, it really does make a difference. And remember, let's take a look at what Soul Invictus does. It says, Solar Ability Final Blows, Hammer of Soul Impacts, and Defeating Scorched Targets creates Sunspots. Your abilities regenerate faster and your super drains more slowly when standing in a sunspot. And that's the part that you're gonna get with that Soul Invictus buff that's now lasting twice as long. In addition, Sunspots apply Scorch and deal damage to targets inside. Entering a Sunspot applies Restoration. Yeah, that's a lot. Frankly, Soul Invictus is one of the best aspects in the entire game. It is what makes Solar Titans so darn good in PvE. All those effects combined into a pretty easy to trigger spawn method. I mean, for goodness sakes, just defeating scorched targets when the sunspots themselves cause scorched targets. Yeah, it's pretty easy to chain sunspots and create scenarios where you're always standing in one. But we're not quite done with what the Phoenix Cradle does. So the second part of the perk is that allies who pass through your sunspots are granted Soul Invictus and Solar Restoration. This is absolutely nutty for every single piece of PvE content, unless you are specifically trying to do a solo challenge, right? You are always going to have teammates, whether they're your friends or you've entered matchmaking, LFG, whatever. So having those teammates able to get those same benefits from passing through your sunspots is just insane. Every single teammate that passes through gets 10 seconds of faster ability regeneration and healing. Guys, one of my teammates actually ran the Phoenix Cradle for our day one Kingsfall raid. 
Like, it was very, very good and very noticeable. Like, I noticed the healing all the time, running from one part of the map to the other, passing through sunspots, getting that healing, getting that ability regen. Like, it is something where you can turn what used to be kind of a class just in it for itself. You're turning your class into a medic class. You're turning it into a support class, something that you normally don't have with solar titans. Generally, you're gonna have to play bubble titan and cast those bubbles and then use the overshield barricades to have that same sort of team element, but the Phoenix Cradle allows you to do that for your solar build, which obviously matters quite a bit. We're going into Grandmasters very soon. Something like acute solar burn, you're obviously gonna want to be using a solar build so having that team focused aspect, that support aspect available in a different element, very, very powerful. Because like, I mean, for goodness sakes, think about all the other powerful builds out there, right? A lot of people pick Solar Titan just because of how good Sunspots and Soul Invictus is, right? They say, nope, I don't wanna play a Void Titan. I don't wanna play the new Arc Titan, the Arc Grenadier Titan build is nutty. People still pick Solar Titan because of how insane those sunspots and regeneration and all that stuff is. So now you're telling me your teammate can be playing that arc, you know, Grenadier Titan. Oh, and then also get the benefits of your sunspots and get that constant healing and never die. Like, it is insane. One person running Phoenix Cradle on your team can provide so much benefit to your squad. So, what about the rest of the build? Well, importantly, it's really easy to swap to the Phoenix Cradle from a Lorely Splendor build. Because I know a lot of you guys spent time and resources making those Lorely builds. I mean, I literally made a video telling people to do so, and it would be pretty annoying of me to say, oh, switch to a Heart of Inmost Light Void Titan. Oh, your armor doesn't work, you need more mods, too bad, right? If you invested in a Lorely build, all you really need to do is now put on the Phoenix Cradle and find a new legendary helmet. Pretty much everything else is the same. We're running hammers, towering barricade, throwing hammer, solar grenade, roaring flames plus soul invictus, wombo combo, and we're using our throwing hammer as a key method to make really easy wells. Then we've got Ember of Singeing, more class ability, Ember of Ashes, more scorch, Ember of Searing, more melee, Ember of Torches, you basically can have 100% radiant uptime thanks to your hammers. So all of that's really the same and the weaponry is also the same. Like we've got a blinding grenade launcher, mainly you want a primary with incandescent. This callus mini tool has served me well, but the new Zyuli's Bane can also get incandescent and that is a contender uh, in this build for sure. And then the Galahorn, great option, but this fixed odds with incandescent has been very good as well, especially because machine gun overload rounds can be quite useful. Now, as for the rest of the mods in this build, Firstly, we just have elemental armaments, easy way to make wells, and obviously we have solar weapons. Then we've got Well of Life. We are gonna need a little bit more survivability because our Lorely is gone, so this is really going to help in that. Uh, double impact induction is amazing. Obviously, we're throwing, throwing hammers non-stop, so that uh, giving us grenade cooldown is very helpful. Then we've got Seeking Wells. Your wells come to you, it's amazing. Then we've got Font of Might to increase the damage with our solar weapons. And then we've got Explosive Well Maker as another well producer. Now you could swap this for Bountiful Wells, but Explosive Well Maker is gonna work really well with our Galahorn, and it actually does work with the Pardon Our Dust. You get a direct impact, you kill a few thralls, and you'll spawn solar elemental wells from that. So even without the Lorely Splendor, this is still an unbelievably powerful build. In fact, it's way more powerful than the Lorely Splendor for all your teammates, right? Uh, you do have to play a little bit differently, however. You can't just rely on the automatic healing. You're gonna have to go and seek out the sunspots you create, but because of how powerful incandescent is as a perk and how good your hammers and grenades and all that stuff are, yeah, it's really not that hard to spawn them. 
Guys, that is it for the video. Hope you enjoyed and found this interesting. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.